This video is going to give you an overview of the buoyant force that's involved in objects underwater or floating on the water. So if I want to look at an object floating, in this case, on the water, the buoy, then what I want to do is I want to find a free or draw a free body diagram. Buoyancy is a force, so you always go with free body diagrams. So with my free body diagram, I know I have a force going down equal to the weight of the buoy floating in the water, and then I also have a force going up called the buoyant force, and we're going to abbreviate that with a capital B to be our buoyant force. So just like we might use W for weight, we'll use capital B for buoyant force. So that's my buoyancy force. It's floating, so it's not accelerating up and it's not accelerating down, so my net force is equal to zero. So when I sum up the forces in the y direction, they're all equal to zero, and that's equal to B minus mg. So the buoyant force in this case is equal to mg because I'm not accelerating up or down. That's easy enough. Now let's look at what makes up the buoyant force. So let's say we have this rectangular box, which is our boat, and it's floating in the water. Well, our box has this thing called the water line, and that separates the part of the box that's underwater to the part of the box that's above the water. So if I look at this, kind of just take away a few pieces and make my drawing a little bit simpler, color code it, and then look at it, enlarge it, what I need to do is I need to figure out how much weight can fill inside this piece of the box, my rectangular box, that's underwater, that's underneath the water line. So this box is floating, remember, and just that little piece in the bottom is underneath the water line. So to figure out the weight of the water that's inside of it, using what we know about fluids, I've got to know the volume of the box that's under the water. So length, width, and height. Oftentimes in fluid dynamics, it's easier instead of just talking about the whole volume that's under the water, but it's easier to talk about it in terms of length, width, and height, dividing it up by the uh, geometry equation that gives you the shape that's underwater. So I know that the density is equal to mass over volume. That's the volume that's underwater. The density is going to be the volume of water that fits inside of here. So to figure out how much mass is inside of here, or how much weight's inside of here, I'll take my density as mass over volume, so mass is equal to density times volume, so the weight is equal to mg. Now I'm going to substitute in my expression for mass, or the rho v, and for m. So that means that the weight is equal to rho vg. So that is the fluid that I'm floating in, divided by the volume that's under the fluid, the water line, times g. This is going to give me the buoyant force. So the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that's displaced. The weight that's important, the weight of the fluid that's displaced. So that means that if I'm in a heavy fluid, such as liquid mercury, I'm actually going to float higher than if I'm in water or alcohol or some other substance. The more dense the fluid is, the higher I float. So there's a buoyancy equation. Buoyancy is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid that's underwater. If it's completely submerged, it's the whole box. If it's floating, it's just the piece that's under times gravity. So that's how we calculate the buoyant force. When we're looking at buoyancy, there are a couple different conditions. It could float, or it could be neutral, just floating in the water, not up or down. It's also floating, it's just that it's completely underwater. Or it could be accelerating down towards the bottom, or it could be accelerating up towards the top. So in terms of a free body diagram, if it's just floating, it's going to have mg, and that's going to be equal to the, normal, to the buoyancy force. If it's neutral in the water, it would be the same free body diagram. If it's accelerating down, the weight would be greater, so I'd have an F net going down, because it's accelerating downwards. If it's accelerating upwards, I'd have an F net going up. But remember that the direction of F net defines the positive direction. So if F net goes down, mg is positive. If F net goes up, the buoyant force is positive. Now when it's time to calculate the buoyant force, it's the same calculation in no matter which free body diagram you do. What's different is how you calculate the volume, the volume that's under the fluid. For the floating object, it's just that little half moon shape in this case that's underwater. But for the other objects, it's the entire shape of it, the object that's underwater. So that's what you want to look at when you're doing the free body diagrams. But you're just going to solve it with the free body diagrams. So keep in mind the definition of buoyancy, rho vg, the density of the fluid you're in times the volume that's underwater times gravity. Got to keep all that in mind. Make a free body diagram because it is a force, and the buoyancy force always points up. Sum up the forces in the vertical direction. If the ball or the object, whatever it is, doesn't have to be the ball, is not accelerating, the sum of the forces equals zero, and that equals the rest of the expression. If the ball or the object that's floating in the fluid is accelerating, then the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the net force, or MA. And that equals, of course, the other forces that are involved in the free body diagram.